artists. Today we're going to take a look at Vincent van Gogh's most famous painting, Starry Night. Starry Night shows Vincent van Gogh's view out of his hospital room and it shows a town and the view that he saw of the night sky. Something really interesting about Vincent van Gogh's painting is he loves to apply paint really thickly and he loves to show visible brush strokes. He didn't really like to blend in his um, colors too much. He liked it when the paint was very thick and visible. If you look very carefully at the moon, the stars, the swirl, you can see all of the marks that his paintbrush has made on the paper. This helps give Starry Night a lot of movement, especially in the sky. It almost looks like it's a windy night. And it also helps make the uh, stars and the moon look as if they are glowing. Today what we're going to do is we're going to be creating our own versions of Starry Night. You're going to be able to add your own details into the picture and we're going to use a lot of Vincent van Gogh's famous details as inspiration. Here we go. To create your own version of Starry Night today, you're going to need a piece of paper. You can either use white paper or blue construction paper if you have it at home. You're going to need a pencil an eraser just in case. You're going to need a coloring supply. I like to use either crayons or if you happen to have oil pastels at home, oil pastels would work out great. And something optional is you can use a sharpie, especially if you're going to be using blue paper. It'll help outline your lines so that we'll be able to see them better. And if you have watercolor paint at home, Watercolor paint and crayon and oil pastel look fantastic together. So you can keep this um, in mind for later if you have watercolor paint. If you don't have watercolor paint, that's okay too. Now to get started, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take a close look at Starry Night and we're going to have to take a look to see what parts of the picture we should include to help us out. What I've done is I've created kind of like a checklist how to make your own starry night inspired by vincent van gogh we're going to start by making the tree first so i wrote begin by making the tree on the left side of the picture this is a believe it or not a tree this is the tree that vincent van gogh saw out of his window when he was staying in a hospital so you can either draw the tree freehand or you can actually use your hand as a tracer if you want to. So I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. On your paper, on the left side, which is this side, I want you to draw the tree right here and you can kind of use your hand to kind of model it for yourself. So if you take your pencil and trace your hand, but instead of doing fingers, do like curvy triangle shapes, almost like witch hands or something like that. That would be a good way to draw Vincent van Gogh's cypress tree right out of his window. If you don't want to draw the tree that way, that's okay too. Something else you can do is you can just draw the tree freehand. That means on your own without using a tracer. I'm just kind of doing the best I can. The tree always reminded me of flames. So kind of think of that like triangle curvy going up kind of shape. All right. Now that we've drawn the tree, we'll see what comes next. After you draw the tree, you're going to draw the mountain line. So we call that in art the horizon line. You're going to draw the line that we see in the picture that separates the ground from the sky. And Vincent van Gogh saw a mountain out of his window. So we're gonna overlap that with the tree. Do your best, does not have to look exactly like the original painting. Um, it can be a bumpy line, it can be a straight line. It's totally up to you. You can even add other mountains in the picture if you want. Like if you look really carefully, you can see that there's more than one mountain range um, in Vincent van Gogh's picture. So you can just kind of do what you think looks best. After the mountain line, 
I'm gonna draw the moon. Think about a C shape for the moon. So I kind of have the steps right over here for you to follow along with. The moon is very famous in Starry Night and it's on the upper right side of the picture. So I'm gonna start with the C shape and then I'm gonna draw another C shape on the inside. So I've got the moon. Do your best with that. It can be big, it can be small. You can kind of switch it up. Next, you're gonna draw the circles for the stars. My tip is don't draw too many stars or else you'll run out of room for swirls and the glowing lines in the sky later on. So just think about some circle shapes. You can see the circle shapes that Vincent Van Gogh has created in his picture. And I want you to draw some circle shapes in your sky. Don't overdo it, just do a couple. Okay, I think I'm good with my stars. I can always draw more later. Let's see what comes next. After stars, I'm gonna draw details on the ground. And this is the part where you can get creative. It's gonna be up to you what you draw on the ground of your starry night. Vincent van Gogh drew a village with houses. You can make any kind of ground you want. It's a little hard to see in this picture, but um, in my little teeny tiny example here, I was thinking about um, Halloween. So I drew a pumpkin patch, um, I drew a fence. Do you have to do that? No, you can draw anything you want to. Maybe there's a lake. Maybe it's the town of Denville. I'm gonna challenge you today. If you would like to draw a town like Vincent Van Gogh did, Something fun you can try is you can try to make some 3D buildings. By the way, I, I could have done more. I'm not going to because this is just an example, but you guys definitely should add more details on the ground. But after you do all this stuff, it's gonna be up to you whether or not you wanna outline in Sharpie. If you do wanna outline your pencil lines in Sharpie, it couldn't hurt, it could only help, but it's going to be your choice. When you're all ready to add color, you have to decide what art supply you're going to use. You can use crayons if you have them, you can use Oil pastels, if you have them, oil pastels work really well. I'm gonna stick with crayons. And when you're adding color, I want you to think like Vincent Van Gogh. I'm gonna start with the moon because it's one of the most famous parts of this picture. And I'm gonna try to find kind of like a bright yellow color. So it always helps to test out colors on the back. You can see, ooh, yeah, that matches actually really well. You can see how your colors come out before you try them on your paper. So just like normal, I'm gonna color in the moon, but unlike normal <laughs> for my next move, I'm going to make the moon look like it's glowing and I'm gonna find another shade of yellow. You can even use the same kind of yellow. And I'm gonna pretend that my crayon is a paintbrush just like Vincent Van Gogh would have used. And I'm going to make some lines around my moon to make them look like they're glowing. Now, something that I'm gonna do that's gonna seem a little weird at first is I'm gonna use a white crayon. If you have a white crayon, great. If you don't have a white crayon, that's okay. Um, it's gonna be really, really hard to see because yeah, it's white paper um, with white crayons. So it's kind of like impossible to see it. I'm just kind of feeling it out, but I'm going to make some white lines too, because Vincent van Gogh does have a lot of white lines in his sky. So we'll see how this come into play a little bit later. Now you can do that for all of the stars in the picture. You can color the inside of your dots and make them also look like they are glowing with your crayons. Okay, now that I've highlighted around all of my stars, and I've actually included this area of the picture too, which is some part of the sky around the mountain, I did some yellow and blue dashed lines. 
I'm gonna also do the swirl in Van Gogh's sky. And I want you to try that too. The swirl gives the sky a lot of movement, a lot of emotion. So try to find some shades of blue to do your sky with. You can, as always, test them on the back just to see what they look like. Cause sometimes when you see them all in person, like they look very similar. These look almost identical, but they come out in three different tones. So you can kind of play around with them. If you're already using blue paper, it might kind of blend in. If you're using white paper, it'll stand out a little bit more. And because I'm using white paper, um, something that I did decide to do that is worth mentioning is I added some orange to the glowing stars as well, just so they stand out. Now, right now I'm making dashed lines and I'm gonna look for kind of like an empty spot. I think I'm gonna just move my swirl over a little bit. Um, it's gonna be a little farther away than Van Gogh's swirl. I'm gonna kind of make this dashed line, these dashed lines over here kind of like hug this star that I made. So it's kind of like a wave crashing over them in the ocean. So do the best you can with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, just have fun with it. And I'm gonna kind of, let's see what this looks like here. Okay, there's like another swirl. So I'm gonna make these lines also hug this star and they're gonna kind of swirl around. So have fun with it, do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of tapping my crayon against my paper. Now, something that would look amazing is if you added more than one shade of blue. If you look really closely, Vincent Van Gogh has used more than one shade of blue. He's used some purple, he's used some white. So feel free to use those colors if you would like to. And you can even use your crayon and you can add some more dashes in the sky as well. Now that I've added all my dashes in the sky and I've added some of the swirl in the sky, I'm ready to tackle this tree. It's up to you what color you make the tree. Vincent Van Gogh's tree is pretty dark because it is nighttime. At nighttime, um, the colors are much darker than they are during daytime. They don't have light to work with. So, I mean, if you want to use a green so it looks like a tree, you're welcome to. If you'd like to use darker colors, like Vincent Van Gogh um, has very dark colors his tree you're welcome to do that as well it's going to be a personal choice whatever you do though try to think about those visible brush strokes that vincent van gogh did i like to use a crayon and just kind of make curved lines so it almost looks like the tree is swaying in the breeze the breeze is the starry night sky it looks great if you mix colors together maybe i want to mix two different shades of green so i have like light green and dark green and i'm not going to blend it that much because vincent van gogh doesn't really love to blend. He's a lot like Claude Monet. They like to make dashed lines. They don't like complete blended in lines. Okay. Now the rest of the picture is totally your choice. It's up to you how you color in your houses. If you have houses, they could be any color you want to. Maybe you have, you know, a pink house. Maybe you have an orange house. You can color in things on the ground as normal. Or if you want to use Vincent Van Gogh's ideas of, um, dashes you're welcome to do that too maybe you have a bunch of dashed line houses to kind of make it look a little bit like the night sky it's really up to the last you. thing that you could do for this project is you can add some watercolor paint if you have watercolor paint handy what you can do is you can take a paintbrush and a cup of water and you can dip the brush in the water use some blue and you can paint right on top of your crayon. It seems a little scary to do it, but crayon and watercolor paint, they don't like each other. They're not friends. Sorry guys, my video got a little bit cut off, but if you do choose to use watercolor paint today, it does look amazing with crayon. Wax repels or resists watercolor paint and you can see the crayon right through the paint if you do that on your sky it looks amazing if you do that on your tree it looks amazing if you do that on the ground it would look amazing as well so i highly recommend trying it out today if you have the time and ability if you already used blue paper you don't really need to paint the background because your background is already those shades of blue like starry night 
Have fun. I can't wait to see what you come up with.